South Bend, Indiana, a middle-class town made famous by the University of Notre Dame. Just a few miles down the road is Jay Willie's restaurant, owned by husband and wife Rick and Tricia and their friend John William. We're having a great day at day at Jay Willie's. This is Richard speaking. How may I help you? When we took this over, it was making great money. Every year consistently, this made great money. Yo, yo, let's make money, man. Come on. The day-to-day -day management of Jay Willie's is left to John as Rick and Tricia live over three hours away where they own another restaurant. Who knows what's going to happen tonight? We assumed that John would be able to uphold the service standards and the food quality that we have, and it will continue to make money. I can do it. And John has run this into the ground. John has just let things go. I certainly got it off kilter. He needs to step up. He's got to be the spark. He's got to be the fire. He can't just be back there. Uh, 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 thinking and contemplating what he's supposed to do. He's got to do it. It's really been tough. Since we were struggling and we weren't really bringing in the cash, we don't have a chef in the kitchen. I'm just here to to serve what he wants me to serve and get it out as fast as possible. All right, got an order up. You get a lot of complaints about the quality of the food here. And that was just a frozen patty. I'd rather really have a little bit of burn. That was really gross. It's not much fun working in a restaurant when all you have to experiment with is canned beans and uh, enchilada sauce out of a jar. The standards have declined so far that I, I'm not even sure we can revive it. I don't think we'll come back unless something's fixed. Sales have just pretty much flatlined. You know, this sucks. This is tough. Now, this place is so depressing, it's hard to even talk about it because it just makes me want to cry. <sighs> now it's just slipped into complete failure. Once it closes, all the money I put in, everything, you know, my inheritance, everything, it's gone. If we don't make that 22000 a week, then we're cooked. We've cashed in our 401ks, we have no savings, and there's nothing left. So, I mean, if this doesn't work, we will no longer be here. We're gonna end up homeless, and it's all because of Jay Willis. <sighs> but it's just, you know, that's it. Jay Willie's Bar and Grill, that's fine, but as for that ghastly sign at the bottom, whenever a sign's flashing, it means desperation. The outside building, well, that looks like it closed down 10 years ago. Let's hope inside is much better. My god. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Rick Excellent. Sutton. Rick, good to see you. Gordon. David Benningham. Thank David, you. nice to see you. First of all, who put that ghastly sign up outside, the one with the flashing lights? I believe our owner, John. Is John here? Yes, he is. I can't wait to meet him. Very embarrassed to have Gordon Ramsay come in here. Uh, he's a world-renowned chef. We're not even close to being up to a decent standard. <sighs> chef Ramsay. John William. John, good Owner. to see you. So you are Jay Willie? Yes, sir. Excellent. Good. Take a seat. Chef, this is uh, my wife. And first name, sorry? Trisha. Trisha, nice yeah, to see you. Nice to meet you. So, Trisha and Rick. Yeah, we're together. Yeah. And John is your partner. Yes. I'm going to have a good look at the menu and uh, look forward to catching up with all three of you. I'm really nervous about what he might order because there's quite a few items on the menu. And I know he's not going to like the pictures in there. Always nervous when there's menus with ghastly pictures. Did you need a few more moments? Um, no, do you know what? I'm going to order the uh, loaded potato pizza. Yeah, let's go for the uh, famous ribs. I'll go for this pulled pork cheese boat. Not a problem. Thank you, my darling. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Say a little prayer. Trust me, I already said a prayer today. Well, OK, here's his order. Is that Ramsey? Yes, sir. I'm just hoping Gordon Ramsey isn't too hard on me because this type of food wasn't my idea. This fryer is ready to go. God, it's grim in here. Sad and grim. <laughs> and a carpet that looks like it's had a thousand buffaloes walking all over it. Holy shit. Yep. I now have loaded baked potato pizza. Lovely. Thank you, mate. Mm -hmm. 
Holy mackerel. That's the strangest pizza I've ever seen. I'm going to ask my beloved father to bless my food. Gentlemen, can I ask a quick favor? Yes. What's yes. that? Would you mind just blessing my food? Oh, yeah, oh would you? sure. Yeah? If you'd be so kind. Absolutely. Well, good and gracious God, we ask that you bless this food, bless Chef Gordon as he is about to receive it, that it may nourish him. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Fingers crossed. <laughs> God. Oh, my God. What is all that on there? That is a ranch sauce. So they put a ranch dressing on the pizza? Yes. It's almost like sort of wallpaper paste. So the pizza sucks. I can see that right there. Can I help you? John, your pizza has bombed. To be honest, I, I've tasted the pizza, and it tasted good. I didn't see what he was talking about. The ribs going to be right, huh? What do you think? Yep. Perfect ribs. Finally, the ribs. Lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. I was hoping, maybe, just maybe, he'd like the ribs. Chef, been doing all right here. Who's responsible for the sauce? Is it chef's recipe or? It's a generic sauce. It's a shame, because it just I destroys do. the flavor. Uh, they are embarrassing. Yeah, I mean, you've got cartilage in there, a mouthful of fat, grease on the outside. That's not even trimmed. Sad. Uh, I agree, I'm a very embarrassed. A bit like the restaurant. Sad. Dude, we're serving an untrimmed rib. What do you want trimmed off? The fat. All ribs have fat on them. John doesn't get it. He's ordering an inferior rib. He's trying to cut corners. I'm just so frustrated that I feel like banging my head against the wall. Stand up sandwich with French fries. Thank you, Dwayne. Enjoy. Thank you. Processed cheese that just like gluing. Pulled pork sandwich. Yeah, that's pulled straight out of the bin. Sweet, taste of nothing, and absolutely ghastly. Oh, dear. We have a pulled pork sandwich. Oh, um, sorry, excuse me. Forgive me, Father, but oh. they have sinned, and I, out of respect for you guys, you're not going to eat that, OK? OK. I don't want to go straight to hell. Oh, man. Forgive me, they have sinned. After saving the priests from an ungodly meal, dear, dear, Gordon's anxious to meet the creative minds responsible for the food. Jeff, Gordon, are you the chef? We don't really have a chef. How can we not have a chef? The recipes don't really change. Everything's prepared the same way. You seem to stand proud of that. The menu was designed to cut a lot of the labor out. Cut a lot of labor out? and serve shit. I finally am glad that I have somebody who agrees with me as far as the standards on the food. John doesn't listen to me. Hopefully, he'll listen to Gordon. I think at Midwest Cuisine, you think of the excitement in terms of, you know, a lovely braised rib, a fantastic sauce. The sauce was synthetic. We sell a lot of them. Is that an excuse to serve shit, because you sell a lot of them? Are you that lazy? Or you sell them, so fuck it, who cares? Oh, I'm sorry, the attitude stinks. Can we have a chat as owners? Yes, somewhere. Sir. Yeah, We're together. Right now. Joe, ready. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, that went about as, as I expected. Yeah. Dissatisfied with the answers found in the kitchen, Gordon takes the owners aside, hoping to determine the root of the problem. What's wrong with the business? John. John has to be the leader here. He's not taking any ownership. Passion. Exactly. And there's none. I try, but. Without any money, the passion is tough when, you, when you're going downhill. How much are we in for if we have to close the door tomorrow? Million two. So you're, you're on your ass. I'll lose the first and only house I've ever owned. Yeah, we've never owned a house before. Any children anywhere? No, we no. can't have kids. I'm too busy babysitting two restaurants. Trisha, she deserves to have kids, too. My wife would love to have a child. She deserves it. But we can't do it because of Jay Willis. <sighs> I mean, I just feel so bad because I can't. She's such a beautiful woman. I can't give her what she, she deserves. 
I, this wasn't how we planned our lives. We are in the ship. We're screwed. Gordon is hoping tonight's dinner service will give him some more answers as to why this restaurant is failing. Hi. Hi there. Welcome to Jay Willie's. How are you folks doing today? Floodgates is open. I want to begin the potato skins. Potato skins, sure. <laughs> I'm thinking the fish sandwich. Oh, uh, got a 16 inch pizza. What's that for? It's a special pizza. So that's a frozen dough. Thing. Frozen dough. Ranch dressing, and then the, what are these little fish food pellets? What are they? Yeah, free frozen sausage. That's the saddest excuse I've ever seen for a piece of my life. There's no doubt I've taken some, I've cut some corners. Some of the items are frozen, and that's just from a cost point of view. What's that there? Uh, cooked chicken. I mean, it's like cat food in here. Well, it'll get fully cooked. But it's really hard when you're trying to stay open. And what's in here? Some baked potatoes. You don't clean them before they go in? There's supposed to. My god. That's the. I, I didn't put them in the oven. Everything's reheat. God bless middle America. The quality of the food is just not there. I wouldn't feed it to my dog. It's embarrassing. It really is. Buy it. Defrost it, fry it, send it. You can't call yourself a restaurant. No wonder no one's coming back. Jay Willie's is doing bad because John is not upholding the standards. What are up? OK, thank you. The things that I see in this restaurant, it's like he, he accepts it all and rolls uh, rolled over and died. You think it's too greasy? So you sent your fish back. Yes, I did. What is that? Fish sandwich. Fish sandwich. I like it. It's frozen. Holy mackerel. My whole sandwich is like all fat. I want something I'm gonna eat. What have we got here? Oh, lordy. What's wrong with that, darling? She doesn't like it. She doesn't like it. It looks like a dog's dinner. What is that? Oh, my God. That is a shock. Uh, I'm absolutely devastated. I mean, they're cutting corners, but all in the wrong places. And John's clueless. Nobody's responsible for the kitchen, but overall, it's an insult to fast food. It's a fucking disgrace. Son of a... Why the ribs back? She said it was, these were too mushy, these were too cold. Is it good? <laughs> <laughs> it's a garlicky, but... It's supposed food coming back. They're not eating. I, I, I don't know what to say. Horrible. Food just put in the process line, more food coming back that's been sent out. I mean, it's almost like you guys have just, you know, given up. I'm standing here with my jaw on the floor. This was definitely humiliating, eye-opening, embarrassing. Gordon Ramsay's appearance at the restaurant may have brought in some extra customers. We're not eating. We're going to eat some else. But unfortunately, the food has scared many of them away. Jay Willie's is doing bad because John's killing off the business. That's the bottom line. After a miserable dinner service, Gordon decides that he needs to meet with not only the owners, but with the entire staff. We have some serious issues back there. I wanted you all together to get an idea of how you felt. And how does it make you feel when you serve that food? Not very good. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. I'm amazed you guys put up with it. It's getting harder and harder every day because the paychecks keep getting slimmer and slimmer. And our sales are dropping like Here. a rock because of John's inability to make anything happen. Rick, you're not here. You're killing this man over here saying that he's not good at anything. Hey, Sam wouldn't be here if this restaurant wasn't dying. So you don't, you can't blame this on me. I'm not blaming it, it all on you. There's no, stuff problem. everywhere. I'm saying don't blame everything on him. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're never here. I cannot come down here and run this restaurant. We live three and a half hours away. John has to do it. It has to come from John. The point, the point is, okay. you're just so, not helping so the business, your and you're point. blaming John for it, and it's wrong. He's here. Okay, yeah, he's so, here every and day, so and what he else goes through it. Doing to ruin our you know, this is our business too. I have mouths at home to feed. Nail me to the cross. Rick's ridiculous. I really just want to punch Rick sometimes. To be honest, this whole issue is not what the problem is with this restaurant. The problem here, whether we all like it or not, is the food. 
sucks. And it's not fresh. And even frozen food is handled badly. All three of you should be ashamed to stand there and allow it to go on. Is it time to get somebody else in to run it? I mean, you know, have you had enough? I believe it's still in me. I just need somebody to help. I need somebody to cover my back. All three of you need to wake up, and wake up quickly. After the staff meeting, Gordon takes a peek into the kitchen storage. What's that there? And uncovers the unthinkable. This is basic hygiene. It doesn't get drained, and the blood is sat out in a warm kitchen. It's not even cold. John, there's more. When Chef Gordon pulled those potato skins out, I knew that he had found something that I wasn't going to like. So hold on a minute. That's going to be deep fried tomorrow. Yeah. That's really going to make it taste better, right? Potatoes are rotten, and we're sat here wondering why the business is on its ass. It starts at the top, John. It's called responsibility. No wonder you've given up. I've been in denial, and I've lowered my standards, and it takes somebody like a Gordon Ramsay to come in and, and wake you up. Rotten tomatoes. Soft, rotten. Oh. The rotten peppers. The whole box is rotten. I wanted to crawl under the table and hide my face so people wouldn't associate me with such crap. If you seriously are honest with yourself that you are starting again, then we start again. Well, we'll do whatever it takes. I'd be fucking ashamed. You shut up, I'm embarrassed. Where do I start with the problems in this restaurant? The staff have got their issues, but that's irrelevant. The big problem is the food, and the quicker they all get up to speed with how shit the food is, the better, because that is embarrassing. John. Yeah? You gonna pitch all this crap? Chef Ramsay gave us a challenge to see if we're committed to changing this food and making it better. It's a fresh start for every, everybody, everything. All right. Oh, my God, are they taking all the food out? They are. I guess we start new tomorrow. I guess so. I was absolutely ecstatic that he was throwing everything away. It has been a huge complaint for a long time. So how does it feel to throw it away? Does it feel like a purging? Yeah, I have to now. It could. Let it go. Just let it all go. It's a huge amount of food that we threw away this evening. John, does it feel good? Yeah? We're starting fresh, and that means getting rid of everything. When I finally saw John, throwing out food that he would have otherwise saved, I knew that we were taking the first step to making progress. OK, it's a fresh start to a fresh day. After the owners took it upon themselves to clean out their restaurant, this morning, Gordon is looking for the owners to bear their souls. Good morning. How are we? Good. Tough day yesterday. Real tough. Cleaned out the restaurant, cleaned out the kitchen, and I'd like to think we started a, a new chapter. I want to chat with you. I want to clean out our conscience. Rick, go first, yeah? Let's go. OK. Clearing your conscience is about reaching inside and being honest with yourself. Yeah. Biggest fear is what? My fate rests in John's hands, and that really scares me. I want this to work desperately. I, I just haven't got much to work with. That's what I'm struggling with. Most people who face the pressure and the problems I have give up, and I, I refuse to do that. I will fight till the last dog dies. I like your determination, you know that. I appreciate it, Chef. Who'd you turn to? I don't have a, anybody to voice my concerns, so it's been tough. Everything's pretty much inside. That's not easy. Truthfully, I'm just struggling to find an internal flame. Have you got it? Because I don't feel it. With support, I've got it inside me. It's there. What I saw last night was huge. What I uh, felt last night was huge. And what I feel this morning, I'm ready to go. I'm forward to seeing you later. Trish, what do you want to see happen? I want John to be Jay Willie. <sighs> if I could take half a rig and put it in John's body, I think things would be a little bit better. He'd have more enthusiasm, a little bit more passion. 
he's just lacking in that. Thank you, Trisha. Thanks. Having gained a deeper understanding of the owner's situation, Gordon is ready to start implementing his plan, beginning in the place that needs it the most. Come through. The kitchen. Look at all that ingredients. What's that for? Barbecue sauce. Excellent. Barbecue sauce. First off, garlic, ketchup, chili, ground coffee, soy sauce, spice. First off, olive oil, yeah? Quite generous on the olive oil. That gives the shine on the sauce, yeah? It was an absolutely amazing experience working with Gordon Ramsay. Nice to caramelize. I'm just in utter awe of his ability as a chef. And then a molasses. That gives it its barbecue flavor, OK? And that is that barbecue sauce. We're serving fresh, homemade barbecue sauce tonight. <laughs> in addition to the new Jay Willie's signature barbecue sauce, Gordon introduces a new hamburger special that Jay Willie's has never offered before, one made with fresh ingredients. Homemade burger, so with a homemade barbecue sauce and fresh cut homemade fries. Are we ready? Yes. As customers arrive, Just follow me. the kitchen prepares the new burger specials. We're serving real food tonight. And everyone seems eager to make tonight's service a success. We have a homemade fresh ground beef burger. I am going to have a burger. Yeah, thank you. Got your ticket. Go ahead and uh, get those fries coming. Four orders. You can do it. Tonight, prove it, yes? It's a half hour into dinner service. Kobe's are done. And the new burger specials are flying out of the kitchen. It's really fresh, isn't it? That barbecue sauce smells good. It's incredible in there. The difference in the energy is extraordinary. And it just goes to prove one single thing on the menu, freshly made, homemade, sells like hotcakes. Oh, boy. Walking in, we got three chef specials going well done. The tickets kept coming in, and I got real nervous. I could barely read the tickets. Two medium wells and a medium. Make that two well done, five mid wells. I thought you said two mediums. I'll make it, make it a medium well. Dude, I need you to tell me what I have, dude, because now I'm all fucked up. I was frustrated. I wanted to throw stuff. I wasn't OK with the organization at all. Fuck, wow. dude, I don't know what's going on. I'm fucking up burgers. Is this burger you gave me that's well done? No, it was you said mid well. It's done, dude. All right, got an order up. Thank you. Despite the confusion over the burgers, burger, 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 they are rushed out to the dining room. Our new burger? And the customers are in for an unpleasant surprise. It's pink. Is it pink? It's over. It's all right. How many burgers have we got left? Uh, one more burger. OK, Christian. 86 burger, yes? Hey, yes, sir. Stop. All right. Yes? Yes. Make sure everybody knows, David, please. Yes, sir. Chris, I need two recooks. Medium on the fly. Yeah, if we can't make that burger, we're completely out of ground beef. Oh, my gosh. All of a sudden, burgers came back undercooked, overcooked, and it's bad. We don't have it. We don't have it. We don't have it. We got a burger coming back. It's supposed to be well done. No, we're out. Unbelievable. I got another recook. This is ridiculous. We are all kind of freaking out. You know, it was scary. Burger sitting over here. Burger's here. Burger's here. And I don't know what to do. It's an hour into dinner service, and the kitchen has run out of its special fresh hamburgers. We're completely out of ground beef. And the burgers that have been served are unfortunately coming back. With no one taking control of the situation. I don't know what to do. The kitchen, and the restaurant for that matter, is in a state of confusion. Dave, could you uh, grab us a package of the old burgers? Sweet sourdough instead of buns? We gotta do what we gotta do. Get them out the burger. They're gonna love it anyway. Sourdough or buns. Hell yeah. I was just gonna keep trying to put the food out. We're going back to regular fries. So we started making the burgers on sourdough bread and using the frozen french fries in and the frozen ground beef. Dude, this, I can't serve this, can I? I don't care, serve me yeah, what? I mean, I, I guess I have to. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. In an effort to make good on the orders. Order up, Ashley. A desperate kitchen staff lowers its standards and starts delivering cheap substitutes. Sorry about that. Good. If your bun? That is all we have is a bun. And the disappointment combined with the long wait is too much for one customer to bear. I'm really going to try. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like something else? You ran out of the fries. You ran out of the bun. 
The burger came back. Sorry. Take it off for check. In tears. Oh, uh, she's in tears? Yeah! <laughs> what is that pile of shit? What's that for? For the special burgers. What? Whoa, hey guys, why is that burger on there, the processed one? John, why did the 86 it when I said take it off? We were dropping the standards just a bit, but. We were under tremendous pressure because there were so many people out there that were anxious to try the food. If we haven't got the right buns, we shouldn't be serving it. And what's the point in lowering the standard just to keep it on? It doesn't make fucking sense. Boys, that's got to go bad. Ugh. He's afraid of pink. Sorry. Ugh. Now I got two paper plates around some sort of big meatball. <laughs> not to How do you want potatoes? Right. Oh, what do they say? It's disgusting, unedible. Unbelievable. Such a shame because we got off to a really good start, but then standards started dropping, but John and Rick accepted the standards dropping and they just were happy to send slop. So a real sad ending to the evening because right now we're back to square one. You should be ashamed. I busted my balls all day today thinking of a way of marketing this place and putting it back on the map. Oh, fuck it. Can't do it. Don't give up on my shit. I'm not going to do anything until I'm 100% convinced that you guys are ready to turn the corner. I seriously want to help. I need to know from each and every one of you that you're ready to commit. I commit. I do. I'm ready to commit. OK, see you in the morning. I'm here early. Taking the staff's word of commitment to heart, Gordon moves forward with his plan to transform Jay Willie's from a dreary restaurant into a more inviting establishment. All right, guys, good morning. Good How are we feeling? Can you see? Good now. Yes. Awesome. Does that look great? Jay Willie's Barbecue awesome. House. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. This is going to be the best barbecue house in town. Oh. Yes. Rick, what's the matter? Thank you. Look, if we don't execute tonight, hey. this is for shit. You're absolutely right. Well, we are going to play to our strengths tonight. And let's get positive. Come on. I am positive. OK, good. You own part of this place. So I'm going to be looking towards you to drive this forward. Yes? Yes. Last night, the minute you guys left, yeah, my team arrived. I've been working all night. Let's go. Huh? Yep. Now, come through. First of all, oh new God. wallpaper, new paint. Oh, look at Final this. tablecloths, yes? It's a new place. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, it's beautiful. I'm so overwhelmed. There are no words. There are no words. Look at it. And this. Oh, my like, gosh. Oh, it's just amazing. The brick facade to give it some warmth. Oh, my gosh. It's classy. Yeah. It was overwhelming for me. Just everything blew me away. Warm, vibrant, and exciting. Carpet, first time in 15 years. Hey, John, keep it clean. Yes? Yes. yes. And I'm not sticking to the floor. Look. John, what do you think? It's awesome. Yes? It's awesome. Rick, what do you think? That we don't deserve this. What do you mean, don't deserve it? Huh? Smack him. Hey. I just want to yell and scream, woohoo! I mean, oh, this is too much. This is too much. Every top barbecue house in the country has the best sauce. And that is what we're going to be famous for. Oh Look over gosh. there. On site, homemade, a exclusive. And when people come to visit South Bend, Jay Willie's, the best barbecue house in town, oh it's my warm. Gosh. I want to stay in this restaurant. I want to spend money in here. Today's a moving experience, both in my career as well as my attitude. And I just, there's so much potential, I just can't wait. With the staff energized by the changes to the restaurant, Gordon now unveils his plan for the food. 75 items on the last menu. No wonder we couldn't control it. Hey, it's now in half. It's fresh and it's gonna be quick. From the homemade burger, the BLT, to the pulled pork. Potato skins, no processed cheese anywhere. Barbecued chicken, uh, spicy chicken wings and legs, yes. At this point, I think with the momentum that Chef 
Ramsey has given us, we are now committed to making this thing right. I'm going to do something I've never, ever done before. I've had my concerns about the lack of strength in the kitchen. They need a proper training and a proper insight to what's going on. I'm bringing in not one, not two, but four chefs. Scott, Kim, Michael, please, and April. This kind of tuition has never been done before. It's awesome. Chef Ramsay let us know that he was there for us. We will be ready for the relaunch of Jay Willie's tonight. Let's go. Jay Willie's has come a long way in a matter of days. Oh my gosh! It's awesome. And it's only minutes from relaunch. Tonight is comeback night, yes? Yes. yes. So, John, you've got to motivate the place, push it through its highs and lows. Don't just do it for Chef, do it for the Gipper. <laughs> yes, the Gipper. OK, guys, let's go. We're opening four minutes, yeah? Right. Let's go, yes? Let's go. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm side your coleslaw. It looks a little different now. Chef Ramsay is hoping his chefs will give Jay Willie's kitchen staff the support it needs to make this critical night a success. Welcome to Jay Willie's. Welcome to new Jay Willie's. I'll take the baby back ribs. Yo, yo, kitchen! Get us wrong, let's go. We're going to be busy. I'm so apprehensive because if we aren't perfect, then none of this matters. Now I might as well just get in my car and drive home. Let's rock this shit out. Dave, you gotta expedite. You and Steve you gotta stay connected. Come on, let's go. Let's get this shit out. In all my being, I didn't want to fail. I was a little scared. Order up, 122. These guys have never been held to these standards. Yeah. Barbecue chicken. <laughs> this is one really cool. Good sauce, different. It's good. It's all really good. Sean, that's it, that's it, yeah? Got a good start. Um, vibrant in there. Food, looking good. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish. How are we? The no bacon on the potato skins was not cool. Damn, damn, damn. Yeah. Let me check on your entrees. Nice to see you all, yes? You, entrees will be fabulous. <laughs> OK, guys, the skins they just sent was it? There's no bacon in there. Please concentrate. Yes, sir. Cream corn and mac. It's all good. No, Dave. We do not send a dirty plate. We're getting busy, guys. We're starting to slip. Come on. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh, Chef Ramsay busted me out. You know, there's a little barbecue sauce in the corner. Get it out. This is our ticket time. I'm so hungry now. We all are very hungry. It's the heart of dinner service. And in spite of the pressure to get dishes out, Unbelievable. Gordon insists on the staff maintaining its standards. Kept the customers waiting. We can't keep them waiting for fans. Yes, gotcha. What table? 114. Time is 7 o'clock. There you go. go. All right, 114, Steve. We're we'll waiting for an hour. 114. That's our next check. Our next yeah. check. Come on, come on, come on. Let's push it, Steve. Come on, man. Uh, it's 8.30. It is, it is. It's late, and I'm tired, and I'm hungry. John. Standards, come on, yeah? The kitchen really got behind. Part of it was my fault because it was overwhelming for me. Come on, guys. Can we stop pushing food around the outside of the plate? They can't eat off the rim of a plate, guys. Yes, yes chef. Okay. We can't drop standards. Last fucking time, OK? Once fine, twice slightly pissed, three times. Take your jacket off and fuck off, yeah? Yes, yes chef. Thank you. Now clean it, John. As the backup in the kitchen continues to grow, John turns his attention to the potential disaster in the front of the house. I want drink, and I need food. She trusts me. OK. Yeah, trust me. <laughs> I, uh, I got to talk you? to these people. Do you? And uh, okay. just trust me. I don't know me. your name, though. My name, Jay Willie. Jay, oh. That's me. Jay. John. Yeah, John, I need some food. OK. OK. I'm going to do my best. How long's the wait? It's running pretty late right now. Let's worry about our standards and not worry about that, all right? John, can we look? Why are you going to run out with that, John? Look, at, look, at, look, 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 look. You, you taste that, then, and just think of a nice pile of shit. Yes, customers are waiting, but are we happy with that? You are happy with no, it. No, I'm not. Come on, then. Standards. There's so much stress. The guests were starting to get pretty tired of waiting. I did drop my standard, and I shouldn't have. I'm just ready to go home. I'm We're taking a bunch of sure. Steve and I'll I mean, because that is kind of ridiculous. Uh, we'll get free yeah. desserts, right? 
Uh, I'll do my best to take care of you. I had so many people were upset, and I was embarrassing. I, I was just, I was ready to pack up and leave at that point. We, I'm sorry, we cook it fresh to order. Come on, guys. Tonight's too important to fuck it up. Come on. I'll be back. Come on, please, Dave. No one's getting a handle of this, and I'm getting fucking irritated here. All right. Josh. The thought of crumbling existed most of the night, but the feeling was, I hope it just doesn't explode. I'm leaving. Two hours. No food, and it's just tough. I just want you to know, this isn't going to last. Come on, guys. Tonight, Jay Willie's kitchen is being tested like it's never been tested before. We do not send a dirty place. And although the standards are better than ever, it's been a way too long. I'll be back. One customer Gosh. is fed up with the wait. Two hours, no food. Right. And it's just tough. I just want you to know, this isn't gonna last. I'm leaving. John, break. Two seconds, both of you a minute. I know tables have walked out, and we can't just all walk around with our heads on the floor. No. Come on, then. Dig deep, but yep. tables have backed up. It's not the end of the world, is it? We've still got to keep it going. Right. But if you give up, up, they give up. I'm sorry. Give Play up. to the very end means the last ticket. I'm with it. Ready? Come on, guys. Okay, let's go. We got it. We're going to have to push the staff, or else this whole thing is just going to fall apart. Wait a minute. This is cold. This can't go out. That's all we needed. Fuck. You sound just like Gordon. Yeah, come on. OK. No problem. With the owners stepping up, the staff gets inspired, which in turn motivates manager Dave. Come on, let's let's calm down and focus. We need some rings and chicken, baby. Serve it. You no, know, I, I do feel that I'm going to have to step up and take charge and get her done. Six combos I need now. All right, let's do it. Full rag, tri-tip entree, and a half rag. Let's worry about our standards. You hear that? Sure the ribs are hot. Oh, they're hot. They're beautiful. Service, please. Come on, you Muppet, let's go. The kitchen has shifted into high gear, and with one final push, the highly anticipated food is on its way to the customers. Mine's very good. Tender, spicy. All right. It's very Best shrimp I've ever had. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, got an order up? Now we're moving. Now we're feeling good. Let's keep it up. Food's coming out right. Yeah. I believe that John has realized he will not accept substandard quality. Good deal. All right. We got a dining room full of locusts, man. They've eaten everything except for the plate. Every plate I've picked up has been clean. Awesome. All we got to do is get these tickets out, man. Just this last bag. Oh, I think I see the light at the end of the tunnel, folks. Now, I, I don't feel like I'm a man on an island alone. I know that Rick and Trish will be here to support me. That food looks beautiful. Yeah. The hamburger is the best hamburger ever had. There's no more to it, I guess. And we will be back. With the locals' seal of approval, Jay Willies is on the road to recovery. It was so nice to see clean plates coming back. Yes? Yes. And we were so busy. 165 customers. I know there were some complaints, and it was difficult, but the kitchen got slammed. And more importantly, we held on to our standards. And now that we know how to do it, don't stop. We won't. Okay? They won't let me. No, no, no. Chef Ramsay has taught us have a passion and make it perfect and don't accept any excuses. John, if they offer you a little less expensive cheese, and it might no. Not no. No. No, 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 no. The staff has changed. John has changed. I'm overwhelmed with sincere thanks for Chef Ramsay. Without him, we would not be here now. What's the feedback from the dining room? They loved yeah. it. The word is starting to spread. Yeah, definitely. You've got your foot on the ladder. It's really important that you continue climbing. You all did a bloody good job, and I'm really proud of you. Kitchen boys, yeah. Bye, guys. Bye, ladies. Thank you very much. John has a new bounce in a step. He has to know that we're on his side and that we're all in this together and it's just not him taking on the world, it's all of us. And get ready, because we're going to take on the world. Wow. 
been very interesting for me to come to the heart of America and meet a really nice bunch of hardworking, humble individuals. But when I first arrived, I honestly thought the restaurant was beyond salvation. But tonight showed a little glimmer of hope. So long may it continue and heaven help them. In the days that followed, everyone at Jay Willie's worked hard to keep their standards up. Let's do it. Start hollering out. Thank you, gentlemen. And continued to perfect their barbecue sauce. A sauce that earned Jay Willie's first prize at the College Football Hall of Fame Ribs Cook-Off. <laughs> With a taste of success, the staff at Jay Willie's continues to work together to make its new barbecue house a success. It may only be an hour outside of Manhattan, but the quiet town of Cranberry, New Jersey feels like it's thousands of miles away. In this historic village is a little French bistro called Hannah and Mason's. Friends Chris and Brian were co-workers here under the previous owners and jumped at the opportunity to buy the restaurant three years ago. Can we get serious now, please? All right, come on, focus, focus. I was afraid from the beginning to take the restaurant. Oh, what the fuck am I doing? This. I was also a little short of cash, so I figured Brian knew the operation. We worked together already, and he had the other half of the cash. We could do this. We could do this. But looking back, no, I don't think I would go into business with Brian. This was a mistake. I'm very laid back, and I, I don't think I let a lot of things bother me. Brian, you suck. Whatever. Brian's very lazy. Brian can be lazy. Brian needs to step up a lot. I just find it difficult to be motivated. That's just how I've always been and I find it difficult to change. When your heart's not in it, why should anybody else's be in it? Why? I agree. My partnership with Brian is not equal. Enough. Enough of this shit, please. I generally pay most of the bills. I spend a good portion of the day ordering food, doing prep lists, working on menus. Generally, I'll work the line for most dinners. Brian, why are you clean? Hold on. I don't particularly like to work the nights, so we're only open three nights a week for dinner. Done. There's no more to be had. I really don't think we're losing out on any business. There's nobody here. People call and they ask, you know, can I come in on Tuesday? And no, we're not open. And you can't bring in the customers. You can't bring in the money. We're having a very tough time making ends meet. It has been increasingly more and more stressful to come in and look at how much we owe money to and the bills are piling up, and it's, it's a little too much stress for me. All right, this pretty much sucks. Hopefully we make some money tonight. I go to try to deposit my paycheck in the bank, and I can't because there's no money. I get sick of how much money we spend on bounce check fees. It's, it's a horrible feeling. Oh, my gosh. If Hannah Mason's ever had to close, I would be lost because I wouldn't be able to support my daughter. You know, for me, it's a career. I don't know anything else. I don't want to really know anything else. I'm trying to hold out for hope. If it goes on much longer, I don't know what I'm going to do. What a beautiful, quaint little town. I can't think of a better way to spend Valentine's Day at Hannah and Mace. Mesa. I guess I couldn't afford the end. That's not a good start. Right. Here we go. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. Follow me. Okay. Excellent, that's fine. Lovely. And so you are? Nick. 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 Yes, okay, sir. Okay, great. Nice cool. to meet you. Hi, watch. Good to see you too. And um, what do you do here, Nick? I'm the manager here. Manager. Mm -hmm. But you look young. I am very young, yes. I'm only 23 years old, and I bust my ass out day in and day out. Chris. Yes. He's sitting down. He's very cute. <laughs> When I saw him walk through the door, and I says, oh my gosh, look at this man. <laughs> this is Marie, she's going to take Hello, care of Nice to meet you. Gordon. Happy Valentine, Happy Valentine, my darling. Happy Valentine's to you. Excellent. Is this a picture of your wife? Yeah, that's my dear lady, yes. Can I see? Oh, please, yeah. That's the 14th Valentine's Day. We haven't been together. She's beautiful. Thank you, my darling. Can't wait to taste the food. I would suggest just to start off with the baked onion soup. Right. Are you asking me or telling me? If you want my suggestion, baked onion soup. Let's go for that, shall we? OK. Um, the quiche, yes. a little slice of quiche. OK. Thank you. Um, I'm fascinated by the lamb lollipops. OK. Lovely. Got that. Lovely. Thank you, my darling. You're welcome. Hmm. Well, the start might be onion soup, that's for sure. We're going to start with onion soup. OK. 
Some people might say, oh, French onion soup is French onion soup is French onion soup. But I think ours have a distinct, you know, presentation. Wow. Let's start off with zero out of 10 for presentation. Lovely. Ooh, greasy. Kate with cheese. Kate with bread. The only thing missing is the soup. What is that in there? That's absolutely tasteless. It tastes like I've just had the dregs from the dishwasher. Hardly any soup. That is shocking. That was very different. Did you like it? Um, uh, once you got rid of all the bread and the cheese and the gunk, it just okay. very, very bland. But I'll buy pass, and hopefully the uh, lamb lollipop will be tasty. What those next? Thank you. You're welcome. Fine dining. A fine mess. And he didn't like this. <laughs> Off to a great start, ladies and gentlemen. What was wrong? Once he got past all the, the gunk with the bread, he said the broth was just bland, and he's never experienced anything like that before. He's never experienced anything as amazing as that. We've gotten, you know, fairly good reviews here, and so I find it hard to believe that it's really as bad as he says. Say something, Chris. Get mad, Chris. I want Chris to get pissed. Uh, this is not going to go good, because if I can't get him with the French onion, I can't, I'm, nothing's going to be good. Wow. That is a big, big lollipop. My goodness me. It's an absolute nightmare to, to cut. Undercooked. It's hideous. Chris, no matter what anybody says, I still think you have the best onion soup and the best lamb. If he talks shit about the lamb, he's, he's out of his mind. It's completely <laughs> ridiculous. That sauce there, that's hideous. It's like a caramel, it's sweet as anything. Three. Um, what did you say that was? A roasted garlic jam. God. Nick, would you have a little taste there? It's like someone's put a topping of a granulated sugar caramel. Although Gordon didn't like the lamb, all the employees and all the customers think that that's our best dish. Very sweet, the sugar. Suddenly, the lamb is raw and it's obviously cold in the middle because it hasn't rested. OK, let's, uh, let's go for the quiche. Uh, Dali, you've got to turn away now. I don't want to see you facing that shit any longer. Absolutely appalling. You said he ordered a rare, not raw. And the sauce is a spoonful of sugar. So, Chris, why, why did that go out like that? Where's my car keys? You got to go out there next time he says something. Uh, yeah, I will. I will. You're starting to sound like my wife now. You're cowering. Whatever. I don't know. Chris is, is definitely scared of somebody telling him his dishes aren't good enough. It frustrates me as a manager because he needs to put his foot down sometimes. Here, possibly my darling, they're going to be saving the best for last. Lovely. And what flavor quiche is it? It is mushroom and spinach. Mushroom and spinach. Yes. Lovely. Thank you, my darling. You're welcome. Damn. My quiche has collapsed. It's gone into, like, this sort of meltdown. It's almost like it's been left out of the refrigeration all day. And as for the salad, well, you do. Get really nervous when the ends of the salads are all black. Hmm. I have a feeling I'm getting yelled at already. And they sort of collapsed and went all sort of um, runny and soggy. I'm sorry. Huh? Happy Valentine, my darling. Thank you. Oh, good. No, he cut into it and it just collapsed and it's all gooey inside. And... The customers mostly have good things to say, so it's a little shocking to hear someone say that almost everything that we served him was horrible. Bye, darling. This quaint village had put Gordon in a pleasant state of mind. First name is Chris. Chris, and where's the brigade? Unfortunately, the food destroyed it. This is my partner, Brian. Brian? Yeah. I'm not really nervous to meet Chef Ramsay. You know, we thought everything was gross, but whatever. OK, lunch was hideous. It's really important, before we go anywhere, I need to know the, the foundation. How many nights a week are you cooking? Well, we're only open three nights a week for dinner. <laughs> Are you having three nights a week? Why? Being ridiculously cautious and fearful and the way I've led my entire life. You played safe. Yes, sir. But sending those kind of messages out to the local community that you're closed longer than you're open is telling the locals you're closed. If he wasn't here, what's his weak points? He doesn't have a love or a passion for the business itself. So how come you're passionate and you're not? We're just different people. Yeah, business is a business. Yeah, it's a restaurant. Yes, I love to cook, but... It would be easier sometimes just not to own a restaurant. When was the last time you made a decision? 
Hey, I made a special. What was it? Turkey panini. Turkey panini. Right. I, I'm just, you know, I don't know what you're looking for. Passion, strong will, determination. You look like you're just about to lose your virginity. <laughs> Sorry. Something needs to happen to relight this flame. Now I'm going to see how you operate it, OK? I'll see you in two minutes. Right now, I am absolutely unfocused for dinner. I, I, I'm going to be thinking everything I send out is, is shit. Unbelievable. All right, let's just get focused and let's get ready for dinner, because dinner is going to be a debacle. Gordon was shocked to find out that Hannah and Mason's is closed more than it's open. But this is Valentine's Day, a day when all restaurants are busy. This is our special uh, Valentine's Day menu. And a great opportunity for him to observe a dinner service. We've got a lot of spinach here. OK. So we have two tables upstairs, right? How many people do we have coming in in the immediate future? I knew that going into Valentine's Day and knowing that Chef Ramsay was going to be overseeing everything that was happening, I was definitely a bit nervous. Dear, oh dear. So, is that ready to go out, man? No, sir. Display purposes only. Seriously? What the fuck is that? It's apple cobbler. When was that made? Well, it's anyone's guess, Chef. I mean, not more than a week ago. And... Holy shit. That's a, uh... A molten lava cake? A molten lava cake? Yeah. No, a molten rock. Yeah. Lava rock. Well, so okay. what did you do with that? Well... Did you play ice hockey? No, that's, again, display purposes only. Right off the bat, we, we were in the shits right off the bat. Why would we even think about going to a customer with something a week old? Oh, we should. Thank you, Chris. Brian. Yes. No, that doesn't look good at all. I agree. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah. Hello? Get rid of it. OK. Yeah. As tensions mount in the kitchen, customers are about to celebrate one of the most romantic nights of the year. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. I wanted to go in and almost thinking of leaving. So food sat up there. Nobody taking it. All right, hit the bell. What? Huh? At least you don't work for him all the time. I could never. <laughs> no way. No fucking way. I think after the first day, I would just leave and never come back. I wouldn't even care if I didn't get him paid. <laughs> Chef Ramsay telling me that, you know, we do things the wrong way just doesn't really work for me. Oh, my God. Ryan. Yes. Two seconds. And he, like, never shuts up. <laughs> Who's checking this stuff? Does, does this guy just send food out? Yeah. So who's checking it? Nobody's checking it. Nobody, no. OK. There's lettuce all fucking rotten there. Yeah? Lettuce rotten uh, there. Yeah. Fist, you got to pick through the lettuce yeah. better. I really am trying to. Like, I'm not well, even... These ones are no good with the rotten lettuce. Let's just go. Oh, fuck me. Where's this coming from? Jesus Christ almighty. Sir, has it been washed? I did not wash that. No. I did not know. We don't wash spinach? We get it pre-washed. You get it pre-washed? That's the first. Oh, look, every time I dig my hand in, it's all rotten. You know, just do just you. Toss it. Yeah, it's gross. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't toss it. Why don't you eat it? No, I'd rather not. You'd I rather not. I wouldn't eat it. But you charge people for it. OK, there you go. You shouldn't, this shouldn't be sent out. No. You should open your fucking eyes. We'll try to fix whatever issues we have, but I can't. I'm not going to cry in the corner about it. You know, life goes on. So. Upon further investigation, Oh, my God. Gordon discovers that something is missing from the display-only dessert tray. Have we served that dessert on there? Yeah. Here we are. That dessert's been served from there. That's not good. What's this here? It's been leaking in the fridge. What? That's really old. It's a bread pudding. That's a bread pudding? Sure. That's a shrimp. Fuck it. What's that? Yeah, that's disgusting. Why is it bubbling? Because it's old. That's gross. We'll get rid of all of no, this. No, 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 no. Nick, I know you're busy. Yeah, I'm fucking shitting myself now. I feel when, you know, things aren't going good, I, I just as soon get out, you know, just move on to the next thing. Yeah, where's Brian? I know you want to run away from it. I'm not running away. No, no, I can't run away from it. Yeah, I've just been watching and fucking shitting myself for the last hour. 
What are you doing to people? Give me an answer. You know, we can't oversee everything we assume that. You okay. Know. Take me down to the fridge. I want to see how you fucking really work. I cannot believe that this is how you guys are running a restaurant. In my head, I was thinking, we're going to be screwed. That's what in there? That's the walk-in freezer. The freezer. That's the walk-in freezer. Look at the mess here. What's this here? Bacon. Yeah, obviously, bacon smiles. That's from lunch. Yeah. Yeah, five years ago. You leave a spatula in there like that, I'm sorry. Nah, fuck off. I cannot believe what you guys are doing here. There was so much going on. My head was spinning. My head was going to explode. I, I, I thought to myself, this is a disaster. What's that in there? Shit, that didn't get put on. Oh, my god. I don't know what the fuck oh, that's all Oh, fuck off. Oh, my god. Oh, no. This is not good. Raw chicken. That should never happen. You know? Oh my God! Chris, it's happen? fucking chicken against raw chicken. It's it's fucking. Hey, panini head, are you listening to me? Yes. You're gonna kill someone. I'm eating here. Partners, partners in crime. You should be ashamed. We are ashamed. You've just contaminated the town. Now, Nick, Nick, yeah. stop. Yeah, everybody. Right now, this is not a romantic eat out. This is a Valentine fucking massacre. It's a disgrace! How can you do this? I'm closing the place down. Switch it off! It's Valentine's Day, the busiest night of the year for restaurants. But what the customers don't realize is that some shocking discoveries left Gordon with no other choice but to shut it down. Switch it off! What do you want me to tell the people? To tell them. You tell me then. What are we going to tell them? Or you say I'm going to stand here and watch you serve contaminated food? No. Yeah. Yeah, fucking shut it down, switch it off, and condemn it. I knew that we were going to run into some problems tonight. I didn't know it was going to be this bad. Mark, turn everything off. That's it. We're done. No one touches or serves any food, right all the way down. I suggest you start coming up with some suggestions to the customers, yeah? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah? Hurry up, Brian. Um, Chef Ramsay is shutting us down. I feel absolutely horrible, and uh, certainly not something uh, I expected. Just, just for the evening. Never in my wildest dreams thinking that we would have to shut down. <laughs> This is the most horrific thing I've ever had to deal with in my life, quite frankly. I felt horrible. What I've just discovered is totally unacceptable. Enough's enough. Chris. Yes, sir. If you are passionate about food yes, and sir. you feel deeply about it, I want to hear it. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to, to tear it down and start over. You've got a big pair of balls facing those customers tonight. What they can say for the partner that you are in business with. Where were you? How many tables did you talk to? How many customers do you apologize to? No. How much support did you give the waitresses, the manager? OK. That's right. You were doing jack shit, mate. I do feel like I carry the bulk of the restaurant. Oh, it absolutely bothers me that Brian doesn't take on some of those things. You make me sick. Unbelievable. On a night when they should have been busy serving, the staff finds itself cleaning up the mess. I don't even know where to start. I mean, I never really thought I'd be in this situation. I'm really trying to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm trying to hold out for hope. Oh, my god. Of course I'm worried. This is my life. I need those customers to come back. Before Gordon unveils his plan for change, he explores the town of Cranberry looking for inspiration. This whole town is built up on farms. Perfect position to have a local restaurant. Wow. Amazed by the number of local farms in the area, Gordon decides to check out the seasonal produce. Hello, ladies. Huh? So Welcome happy to, be to here. Turian Orchard. Delicious. We're glad to have you. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank Absolutely you. amazing. Just well, driving around yeah. locally and just looking at some of the farms. I mean, it's a chef's dream. <laughs> We pick everything every day. Amazing. And in terms of variety of apples, how many do you have here? We grow 35 different kind of apples. We 
pretty good crunch there. Mm, delicious. Right, should I uh, just help myself? Yes, yeah, your yeah. favorite. Fill yeah. it in. Excellent. Lovely. Look at the size of these. Great. That is amazing. Yeah, I'm going to put these to good use. Excellent. What are you going to make? Uh, oh, a secret. You're going to have to come for dinner. All right, we're available. Thank you. Inspired by the fresh, locally grown apples, Chef Ramsay heads back to the restaurant to work on a special he has in mind for tonight's dinner service. Right. What are they called? Apples. Apple fucking smart ass. You asked me what they were, they're apples. Yeah, no, but it's the way you say it, you, with no enthusiasm. If I want to learn to cook like you, I'll definitely buy your cookbook. But what, what, this, what, what, it's just not for me. Why are you in business running a restaurant when you're completely passionless about talking about ingredients? It's a fucking apple. Yes, they're local apples. That's great. Okay, when was the last time you tasted one? It's been a while. I haven't been to the local orchard Tur to get an apple. Taru Farm. Well, I've been there for the last two hours. Okay. It's like being around your parents when they're arguing, and it's the most uncomfortable thing in the world. And uh, now I hated it. Yeah, it's a good apple. You don't get it, do you? I do get it. Them delicious. And so talking to you about it, it's like, oh, really? It's an apple. Yeah. One a day but, but keeps the doctor away. Am I supposed to jump up and down? No, no not at all. It's just becoming clearly evident that you are incredibly soulless when it comes to food. You're entitled okay. to your opinion. If Chef Gordon keeps pushing me, I just won't be here anymore. You won't see me today. As Bryant cools off. OK, apples in. Gordon teaches Chris a new special. Everything has to be relaxed. Pork medallions with caramelized Braeburn apples. And then just finish with a hint of the mustard. Yeah? Yes. Hoping to put the Valentine's Day massacre behind them, the staff gears up for dinner service and takes advantage of the local produce. The apples are good. Are we, uh, are we ready to go, yes? Yeah? OK, guys, let's go. Let's get them in. I have no qualms about leaving. I feel bad for you guys, but there's no way. If you start swimming with that shit again, I will fucking see you. Let the bloodbath begin. Brian, I'm going to do the best to get Brian more focused for dinner. Brian, why don't you show me your passion and lead the brigade tonight? Sure. It's fine. That's fine. That sounded enthusiastic, didn't it? I don't feel like I need to prove anything to him. I mean, I am who I am, and what are you going to do? Special, we have sauteed pork medallions. I will have the filet mignon. Harvest salad. You fire the entrees on table five. What's first up, uh, Brian? What's that? What's first up? What's uh, going I'm running around trying to get all this stuff together. Um, with uh, five tickets on the board, uh, is it worth getting something going? Brian, it's a very quiet kitchen. Normally, it's quiet. We don't tend to yell, shout out, or. So how do you guys know what's going on when no one's talking to each other? We haven't said anything. I guess I'm not running it then. That makes me angry and not getting served in the restaurant. Beginning of the service, Brian told me he's going to run the kitchen and run it with some passion. But so far, I don't see it, I don't feel it, and the kitchen is backed up. Customers are complaining about waiting, and I don't think Brian actually gives a fuck. I'm just waiting for my for what? Entree. Which one? 102, 102 still? OK, I'll get it. 102, how long? Two minutes, three minutes, four? Not really sure. How long are you waiting? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Fuck it. Dude, this is taking forever. Brian, yeah. should you tell Nick to slow down the orders or what? He should know. I mean, we shouldn't have to tell him. He could tell that we're backed up. Oh, my god. Come on. Brian is not putting in enough effort. It makes me frustrated. He needs to step up more. I feel pressured when someone's there watching me and telling me I can't do it, but I don't need him here yelling at me. That's not going to make me want to work any harder. Your lack of excitement and passion bugs me. I'm struggling to come to terms but, to why you're in business. I'm not like you. I, I can't get excited it's over it. It's not what you're doing to me. You've got to understand that. It's what you're doing to the business. The business for me is the bigger picture. I'm not here to massage your ego. I'm really sorry. Customers are complaining about waiting. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Uh, I just felt like I was being picked on and whatever. Panini head, I'm worried about how much you're putting the business down. But you I'm won't not. accept that, because you can't be honest with yourself. Because I'm not. Oh, okay, you're being what, a dick about it. What am I being a dick about? Talk just, to me. Just the way you talk don't to people. Don't run down the stairs like a little girl. Talk I'm not to gonna, me. I'm talking to you. You don't talk to people. That's your problem. I'm calling people a nini head. No, I called you. I, I called That's you. like fucking I, sixth grade. How I fucking old are you? I don't need someone to tell me, you know, talk to me like that. I'm past that point in my life. It's just ridiculous. Enough is enough. I'll leave you.
It's an hour into dinner service, and Brian has threatened to leave the restaurant. Oh, yeah. With no food leaving the kitchen, oh, everything is at a standstill. You don't, you think, I don't think he's going to walk out tonight. Yes, you will. I don't think he's on the verge right now. He says he gives, says he gives it another hour. He says if Ramsey keeps taking it, then he's leaving. Brian did get a little frustrated with Chef Ramsey. And I don't know what's going through Brian's head right now. If I didn't give a shit, you know I would have left a long time ago. I'm dedicated to this place because I want to be here. I want to do this. I want, I want to make it work. All I want is just for you to show a little bit of interest. I I'm am stop interested. Moping around. If I wasn't interested, yeah. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be doing this. Right. In my heart, I really I do care. Maybe I don't show it all the time, and I should, but I definitely need to show that I have more interest than what I'm perceived to have. Great, let's go. This is table 11. Table 11. Um, I gotta wrap a couple more pork. Table 102 and FO. Okay, here we are. I'm sorry about the wait. I apologize. Right. Hit the bell, please. Wow. Keep going, yes? That is going. Table three. Table three. Table three. All right. Thank you so much. We're braver now. Keep going. That really goes well together. Thank you. We started pumping things out. It took a little bit while in the beginning, but once we got going, it, it went over pretty well. Thank you. Have a good one. Good news tonight is that the special sold out. Yes. Yeah? Great news. Brian, you're smiling for the first time since I met you. I'm changing right now. I mean, I need to be able to have a positive attitude all the time. Let me tell you something really seriously, honestly. If you actually think this restaurant in this community is going to be here in five years' time when you're mediocre, bang. We know that, you know, we have to do something different to make the business grow. Thank you. And you're absolutely spot on. We have to be special. And we have to cook locally. I think the products that we had today were excellent. So it would be good to, you know, put a lot of that into our menu. That's what we have to change. Yes. Tomorrow, we're going to revamp the whole fucking place. I think we need a change, but I'm nervous, scared. Tomorrow morning, this place becomes the crown jewel within Cranberry. I really don't know what to expect. Is that clear? Sounds good. Is there anyone here that's not fired up? OK, let's do it. With Brian finally on board, Chef Ramsay moves forward, transforming Hannah and Mason's from a dreary bistro into a delightful cafe. Right, good morning. Good morning. Excited? Yeah. Extremely <laughs> excited. I've got you an end. Oh, I didn't say a low shit. That I was believe awesome. you did. Happy with the end? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now it's time to open a new chapter for Hannah Mason's. Let's go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. on the floor. Oh my god, I just couldn't believe how great it looked when we walked in. A new deli counter showcasing local fresh products. Oh my god! We didn't just renovate this place. We changed the meaning of it. The breads, the homemade cupcakes, everything made locally. I like it. Local farms share the pride and you show it off. This place can become synonymous with these farms. You know that? It's got synergy there. Oh my God. It's amazing. It's, amazing. it's the happiest I've ever seen you. <laughs> <laughs> if this doesn't really light your fire, I don't know what will. I'm glad Chef Ramsay came and you know he made these changes. It's amazing. It really is. And I'm hoping that, you know, it makes our business all the better. Beautiful. I think I'm in shock. The restaurant is gone. I just don't know. You don't know? Oh, no. You changed your mind? I don't know. It's a complete... Hannah Mason's closed last night. Hannah Mason's Bakery and Cafe opened today. I just don't know going forward. It's, I, mean, I mean, everyone's afraid of the unknown. I knew there was going to be changes, but this is a complete departure from what we've done. Hannah Mason didn't close last night. We just changed. We changed turned completely. A new completely. chapter. It's, oh, it's overwhelming. Just Embrace change. Just being a realist. You're not just being a realist. Really you're being pessimistic. Chef Ramsay obliterated Hannah and Mason's as it was, and it's not going to work. Coming up. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! 
How will relaunch night be remembered in the history of Hannah and Mason? So you want to tell them customers are coming for the make of mashed potato? No, we can I sub find something. We can sub something out. Yeah, tell them to fuck off. Does Chris have the courage to change? I don't feel like I'm in control at all. It's just excuse after excuse after excuse. 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 And finally take charge of his kitchen. You own the place. You're the boss, sir. That's bullshit. Yeah, you damn straight. Right. Next on Kitchen Nightmares. Gordon has revealed that the new Hannah Ann Masons will be an upscale cafe and no longer a French bistro. But not everyone is comfortable with the change. Embrace change. Just being a realist. You're not being a realist, you're being pessimistic. Right. OK, we'll go through the menu. Previously, the menus, two menus before lunch and dinner, absolutely crazy. You've got no idea how simple this is. Fine dining has gone. Yes, it's small, but it's powerful. Fresh, vibrant, rustic, countryfied cuisine. Brian. I'm ready. Let's get started. Let's see what all this stuff looks like. Chris. Look at that face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just re I'm just reading the menu. Thinking in my head, it's different. It's, it's definitely different. No Why did you ask me here? This is because we needed a kick in the ass. This is, I, Jeff, this is I, just things going through my head. That's all. I, well, let's see. Chris is really nervous to make the change just for the fear of losing business that we have. Yesterday, he astounded me. Today, you're <laughs> shocking me. Because I'm shocked. Oh, just, my God. I need to get my hands in it. While Gordon had the staff focusing on the new menu, his team put together a farmer's market, an event to showcase the new relationship between Hannah and Masons and the local farm community. Uh, let's go. Hi, guys. Thank you. Uh, good morning. How are you? Right. No. Uh, fantastic. Awesome. So we've got some taste of olives. We've got some scones. Get the staff involved. And uh, make sure all these menus go off as well, yes? Okay. Hello, everybody. A little chilly out today. Scone? Right, flies given out. A little taste. Let's go. So this is our new menu. We're reaching out to the community. It's going to flourish our business to a whole new level, you know? You got to see it. It's yeah. beautiful. Man. The new menu looks really good. Yeah. It looks great. Hi. Hi. Well, How are you? Congratulations. Thank you. For you. Yes, it is. Thank you. It's great for me to meet the local farmers. I love the idea of using locally. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed our apples. We did. They were awesome. Well, let's see if we can work something out so absolutely. you can use more local produce we all year round. Yep, yeah, we are yeah. going to absolutely do that. Great. I hope that people uh, are going to be happy that we're using local growers. And people are always happy about that. And you taste it. You definitely taste the difference. There's no doubt about that. After a successful farmer's market, Gordon introduces the new menu, a menu created to take full advantage of all that the local farms have to offer. Let's go through the menu, yes? First of all, just look at the color of it. It oozes what? Vibrancy, freshness. freshness. The dishes you can recognize easily, the ribeye sandwich, smoked chicken salad, beef hash with eggs, the entrees, a really nice uh, winter uh, free-range chicken stew, the lamb burger, great short ribs, uh, fish of the day is going to be the swordfish. Yeah. I like a lot of the items, and I like the menu, and I like the simplicity of it. But I think there's going to be a learning curve. Any questions? No. No? no? Excellent. Did you see the sign? It's Hannah and Mason's, not Hannah and Mason. All right, come on in. We're right here. We have a couple changes to our menu, as you can see. The chef's special today is a grilled swordfish served with tarragon mashed potatoes. This morning, I thought Brian would be really anti any form of change, but he's actually embraced it quite well. But Chris, he's been on and off the train all day long, and the jury's out as far as I'm concerned on him. But tonight, we'll find out who really wants to turn this place around. It's been an interesting launch. Gordon knows that in order for Hannah and Masons to make a profit, they must successfully flip tables and have two complete seatings. Chris. Yes, yeah, Chef. We have to flip tables tonight. Well, what does that mean? Making money. I know you're not used to it, hey, but we've got to do it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm in control at all for what's going to happen this evening. Not until the tickets start rolling in. It's just the anticipation at this point. I think the special sounds really good, though, too. The swordfish. Here she comes. First order. Well done, yeah. Brian, one cup salad away, please. OK. Pour us up. Gently, gently good. Nice. 
Two and 20 gone, Brian. Uh, yes. Yeah, Chef. First course on 23 just went. Can I? This tastes so amazing. Damn, by the Much fresher. Mm -hmm. It tastes so fresh. Salad, soup, yeah. moving out. Very yes. Quickly, yes. Yeah. Any, com any complaints? Any feedback? No complaint about, about the freshness yet. No complaints about the freshness? No complaints about the freshness. That was a joke. Yes, it was. Yes, Good. sir. I've never seen it move so quick. You won't. Yeah, let me just check. Yeah, I'm a yeah, thermometer I'm alive. again. I'm alive. I'm alive. I got a pulse. Yeah, no, no, just. It's moving. Yeah. Huh? Surely there must be a difference inside here. With Brian rising to the occasion and getting appetizers out promptly. All right. Gotta start turning those tables there now. Yes. It is now up to Chris to deliver the entrees so that the next round of customers can be seated shortly. Next table. Uh, right now, nothing else fired. Nothing else fired. Yeah. Give me Nick, please. Anything about to be fired? Anything happening or? Got a turn, Chris. He's oh. killing me. I said you're killing me. Uh, Nick, are we falling behind or Yes, uh, I think we are falling behind. Unbelievable. Last night, the appetizer took 20 minutes to come out. Tonight, they're only taking 12, but that's not the problem. The problem is the entrees aren't coming out quick enough, the customers are staying at the tables longer, and we need to flip those tables if we've got any chance of surviving. Get some tables up. Get some tables up. Right, yeah, with the queue at the door now, we've got to push these tables out. Go on, now, what are you waiting for, Marie? Table four. Table four, yeah. Open up, buddy. What's going next? Come on. You got backing up with tickets. You got to talk to these two guys. Someone needs direction here a little bit. I'm going on a salmon and crab and a swordfish. So I need mashed potatoes, please. V86 mashed, unless we got some somewhere else. Having run out of mashed potatoes, Chris makes a very telling decision. I'm not gonna be serving mashed potatoes on the uh, swordfish anymore. We were running low on mashed potatoes. Um, and I didn't think it would be a big deal to sub something out. I'm thinking in my head, I don't want this to get backed up, then the whole house of cards falls. Can't we put potatoes on, Chris? I mean, by the time we get them peeled, we're gonna put them on. Might be tomorrow. Oh, here we go. It's just excuse after excuse it's after excuse. excuse. excuse you Jack. own the fucking place. Yeah, yeah, you're damn sure. So straight. you want to tell the fucking customers we can't be bothered to make a fucking mashed potato? We can sub something out. I just find it embarrassing. Why can't we sub something out? take it out. out. And we could sub something out. Just too easy. Ah, fuck it. Do the easy route. Yeah, tell the fuck off. We can't be bothered anymore. You're the boss, chef. Yeah. That's bullshit. It's the heart of dinner service. And in an effort to keep up with the orders... Go start turning those tables there now. Yes. Huh? Hi. Chris decides to cut corners. Not going to be serving mashed potatoes on the uh, swordfish anymore. Oh, here we go. We were running low on mashed potatoes, um, and I didn't think it would be a big deal to sub something out. I'm thinking in my head, I don't want this to get backed up, then the whole house of cards falls. Just too easy. Ah, oh, fuck it. Do the easy route. Yeah, tell them to fuck off. We can't be bothered anymore. You're the boss, yeah. That's bullshit. All we need to do is peel half of the potatoes. We get them on. Huh? Silvio, peel some potatoes, please. <laughs> I've tried to make it as simple as possible so you don't get backed up. You're all right, you're right. We're and I'm trying to relax things a little bit, to speed things up a little bit. So, okay. Yeah? Yeah. So we get out of that fine dining mentality and sort of, you know, push it forward turn over. Bit. Okay. You'll be surprised over a year how many tables you turn quicker. Which we do. We need to turn them. The staff quickly preps the mashed potatoes in an attempt to get back on track and push entrees out. Uh, potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Service, please. As Chris finds his groove, the kitchen catches up. And now, for the first time, this dining room is turning tables. She's going to sit you down, and we do have a couple of tables getting up in here. I promise, as soon as we get them clear, we'll get you right down. And three more salmon and crabs up, a macaroni. We used to have nights where we would do 30 dinners, and it felt like 85. Everything's looking good, guys. Beautiful. It's the relaunch, we did 85. It felt like doing 30. It was a nice change, I got to say. All right, pick up, please. It's just going to take Chris a little while. He's not really good with change. I mean, think about it. We've had the same food on the menu for almost four years now, so change is not a thing for Chris. Are we starting to play down, or...? Yeah. yeah. With two dinner seatings completed, the new Hannah and Masons has successfully cleared its first major hurdle. The buzz was phenomenal. The vibrance, the freshness, and the feedback was great. However, more importantly to this restaurant is quality control. A special is to enlighten a customer to what the chef's about. Uh, fair enough. You can make mash. Four potatoes peeled, bang. 
That's where we discipline ourselves. Yeah, you're right. Nah. You're right. I'm saying you're right. Relax, <laughs> guys. You're right. Brian, I want you and him to be better. Do you understand? I want you up there and not treading water down there. Uh, I look forward to the, the future. I, mean, I just, I still think there's a lot that we need to work out, um, Chris and I. So, you know, there's still some more changing to do, and this is a start. So, we're excited. I came here because you asked me to come here. Yeah, to put this restaurant back on the map. Yeah, the minute I've gone, yeah. It's up to you guys. But one thing you have to do is make money to survive. That means commitment, heart, desire, and a real hunger to make it work. I give you a new menu, new decor, new equipment, new launch. What I cannot give you is the heart to make this successful. That can only come with it. And that's what it's going to take to get this place pumping. I think Brian sees that he could put his stamp on this place now as well. I think in the past he thought it was only Chris's place, Chris putting his stamp on I think he, he sees now it's a clean slate, and he could put his thumbprint on it. Call me, yes? I will. Yeah. Murray has your cell, right? She has my email, she has my cell, yeah, and she has my home address. One thing she hasn't got is my fucking hotel room key. <laughs> <laughs> right, good night. Yes? Good night. Oh, no. oh. Thanks, Jeff. Thank, Thank you. Take care. That was tough. Honestly, really tough. From the minute we had the Valentine's Day massacre to a successful relaunch tonight, it's been a tough week. And I personally feel that I've been dragging Nick, Brian, and Chris every inch of the way. And I don't know if they've got the desire to go that extra mile. But what I do know is these apples are delicious. St. Clair Shores, Michigan, a summer resort community about 40 minutes from Detroit. Located on prime real estate is Jack's, a lakeside restaurant recently acquired by three bodybuilders, Bill, Scott, and Tamar. Let's do it, Scott. I met Bill and Scott at the gym. Easy, get it? We all work out together and hang out together. All of us are partners in the restaurant. Jack's is known for having great entertainment being the resort style place to come to. It's like girls gone wild across the whole lake. Winter time, there isn't much going on. Jax has had a reputation for bad food. I don't think I'd order it again. And so that's really, in my opinion, that's what killed us. We really got to fix this. We brought AJ in to run the kitchen. Here's the ribeyes. AJ is Tamer's father. No, that's your table, that's your kebab. I don't see the fish and chips, man. No, you don't understand. We put all this trust in him. Oh, never mind. And the kitchen has completely fallen apart. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. So we had put him in the front of the house to act as the general manager, just so we don't have to fire him, because that is my partner's father. Can I help you with something? I'll be talking to the customers, flirting with the ladies, and asking about the food in between. I'm gonna go get myself a drink. <laughs> On a business level, I can't stand a man. Every night during hours, he gets wasted. He gets so drunk. Bring it on. <laughs> Uzo is my favorite drink. I like to drink Uzo. And we are gonna have music tonight. <laughs> to me, it's not professional. <laughs> it's a nice life. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Get him out, take him out and beat him. Scott is dangerous. He can hurt you if he wants to hurt you. People are terrified of him. No, no, no. One minute late. I'm telling you to see. Started getting calls from customers saying he scares everybody away. So Tamara and I had to make a decision to remove him from the restaurant. Unbelievable. He's a silent partner now. I'm about to have a nervous breakdown. Total mess. We got Aaron in to replace my father in the kitchen. I'm looking for 53 calamari. Let's go. I had only been here seven weeks, and the whole ball of wax was, uh, was, was messed up. I'm smelling fire. I knew there had to be some changes, but I wasn't going to be allowed to make them because the owner's really happy with the menu. It's just unfortunate that we have to take money from other avenues to try to make the place survive. I'm the one that has the most investment. I have almost a half a million dollars invested. If we're about to lose this business, I can't recover. 
Scott feels that we are running the business into the ground and he's losing all of his money. We owe Fairway $11,000. I mean, we owe back sales taxes. We owe back payroll taxes. When you start getting to owing the government money, then you know, that's an issue. If things don't change, I don't know how to make the place survive. Taking advantage of the frozen lake, Gordon snowmobiles his way to Jack's. Wow, absolutely amazing. This restaurant is centrally located at the heart of five great lakes, but they're in trouble. I don't know why, and I'm about to find out. Unbelievable. Jack's. Wow, what a place. Welcome to Jack's. Hey, nice to Jack. see you. Nice to have you. Gordon. Come on in. I'm actually not nervous, but I hope he loves the food, of course. Um, AJ, so you're the owner? No, but Scott is here and Bill oh, are here, yes. And Scott is the bouncer? No. Why are you standing there looking Owners. for a fight? <laughs> hey, come over. Tell the way you're standing there. How you doing, my man? How, How you doing? Good, good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Are you uh, training or what? I've been training huh? 24 years. It's like. extraordinary. Are they real or...? They're very soft. <laughs> so, um, you're the owner? I'm one of the owners. Oh, uh, his son is the other owner. Okay. okay. He'll be in the same way. Okay, good. And there's one more somewhere. He's nice to meet you. Huh? Another <laughs> gym rat. <laughs> extraordinary. Nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Should we step out? After meeting two owners and a general manager, Gordon decides to talk to each of them individually so that they can be totally honest about the problems at Jack's. Now, what kind of hours are you putting in? 65 a week. And Scott put 65 in? No. We had to move him out of the restaurant. He was scaring my employees. Holy shit. Why was Scott pushed out? Because he's lost a ton of customers because of the things that he did. We got complaints, complaints, and complaints. Why would you scare customers away? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Maybe because I was intense, you know? But I want to be more involved. What's the problem with the restaurant? We have terrible food. What's the problem with the restaurant? I personally don't see a problem with the business. It's really good. It's... OK. Um, what's the problem with the restaurant? AJ. What's he drinking in the bar? You know, he drinks ouzo all the time. He just turned around and drank a quick shot. That's what he does. Makes him $100,000 a year. 100 grand? Yes. Ridiculous. Oh, my God. Three individuals, three completely different stories. I haven't even tasted the food yet. Where do you start? Oh, my God. OK. Here we go. Hmm. Right. Nice Erica. to see you, darling. Erica. It's really important for me to see as much as possible. I would try this omelet here. It oh, crabs. Just split with a cake. It's, it yeah. looks like crap. Yeah. <laughs> a crab omelet? <laughs> I hope not. OK, I'll definitely take one of the uh, K omelets. Okay. Then I'm going to go after that for the uh, honey pecan salmon. OK. And then um, mm. good old-fashioned fish and chips. Oh, good. Yeah? Thanks, Alan. Excellent. You just sat there staring at me like some big muscle-head meatball. Fuck me. Aaron. What? Why do you spell with your crab with a K on the... Because it's not real. It's my crab meat. I didn't want anybody to get the misconception. It's artificial. That's a guarantee. No complaints on this. Guaranteed? That's a pretty bold statement. Excellent. Thank you, my darling. Wow, look at the size of that. That's a lot of crap. And you haven't told me about the K yet. Oh, he said he wanted everybody to know that it wasn't real crab, it's artificial crab. So he spelled it with a K so there was no misconception. So it's fake crab meat mm -hmm. in a seafood restaurant on the water. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck me. Holy crap. Rubber, tasteless. That's going straight to the trash. Okay. Oh, my God. What's wrong? He hated it. Why? The fake crab was the number one reason. The omelet didn't go over well. No. He doesn't like the crab in there. I, I've never, I, that was already here. I didn't buy that stuff. I don't want to use frozen fish. It's not a product that I'm absolutely overly proud of. But at the same point, I'm held accountable for all the inventory that the owners have paid for. How was the food so far? Why are we serving fake crab in an omelet? I don't. He did that. You're the general manager. Why did you? <laughs> Why are you laughing? I give the choice. Have you been drinking? No. 
The crab was shocking, embarrassing, and fake. It tasted disgusting. Have you tasted that crab? No, I'm extremely allergic to crab and shrimp, so no I crab can't in, even there's eat no it. crab in there. I understand, it's monkfish. So, oh, my god. I'll let you finish your meal. General manager, my ass. I'm being blamed. He thinks that I should be allowing him to do that. Or letting him letting serve him. those types of Correct. dishes? Because it's fake crab. AJ is the general manager. He's supposed to oversee the food. And now I'm hoping and praying that Gordon says AJ is the one that's bleeding his business. OK, fish and chips. Certainly the best looking thing I've seen. Is that really rubbery? Is it frozen, the fish? I believe it's frozen. It is frozen. When you take a bite of that cod, it's almost like you've got a breaded condom in your mouth. Oof. He said it was rubbery, uh, too greasy, and it just said it tasted like a frozen cod, and obviously he hit it right on the button, so. This is the same recipe that we've used here forever, so I am for change. I want the change. Good. Wow, this one is the salmon. salmon. Look at that. Thank you, sweet. Everything's just so sweet. The dressing is like honey, and so much of it. Absolutely disgusting. Quite possibly one of the worst salmon dishes I've ever eaten. Me yeah, yeah, yeah. like it? No. I don't like anything. That's one man's opinion. It's a pretty successful opinion, though. <laughs> Fuck. Whoa. After one of the worst meals he's ever had. This is Chef Aaron. Aaron. Chef Ramsey, how are you doing? Gordon begins to explore how this perfectly situated seafood restaurant can serve such dreadful food. That was horrendous. Why are you serving fake crab meat? It's inventory that we have. Have you tasted that? It's plain. There's nothing to it. It's just disgusting plastic. It's exactly what it is. The salmon dish. That was shit at its best. Sweet on sweet on sweet on sweet. That's actually one of the top sellers. For That's app. why the place has got such a shit reputation for crap food. It's still not clear who's in charge of the food. He's in charge of the food. It's not true. I have no control. I felt like I was being thrown under the bus because I had all the recipes and the things that he didn't enjoy or things that were set in place before I even got here. Who's controlling the fucking menu? The owners are. Scott, is that what you wanted here? Not, not at all. I don't have nothing to do with food. What? Yes. AJ, I want answers. There are certain things that are not under my Sorry, control. You're the general manager. I tried not to have it go on, but I get overruled. AJ has many excuses and never wants to own up to his faults. <laughs> it's terrible. AJ, it's got to be your responsibility. No, no. With no one taking responsibility for any of the problems, Gordon knows the best way to get any answers is to observe tonight's dinner service. OK, how would you like that cut? All right, it's our first order. We got tables. Tamar, how you doing, brother? After working a full day at his other job. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Tamar, the restaurant's third partner, arrives. Let me ask you straight out, what do you think is wrong with the restaurant? The food's like hit and mess, it's inconsistent. Yeah. And forget the father figure now, but isn't AJ responsible for the food and beverage in terms of running the restaurant and the kitchen? Yes. And every time I asked AJ to what was going on, he was blaming the owners. I do have the most difficult position being here. I'm working with my friends and my father, who is my family, and that makes everything very difficult. It sucks. I'm going to have a look around. Okay. Spend time in the kitchen, the dining room. Chef. It's good to meet you. Yeah, likewise, finally. This rice has issues. Take this out and at least try to stir it up or something. You brought it up here? Why well, I gotta move it? There's not enough depth in our kitchen. Yeah, I got a big chunk here, too. What the fuck, man? They've been set in their ways. I don't know that they want to conform to a change. Do we have any rice yet? Nope. I threw it out. Oh, my god. With a clear lack of support in the kitchen. I'm fucked here. Aaron has yet to send out the first wave of orders. She said it's on the way. So it's Christmas. <laughs> My lead is table 11. They don't have any food. Well, it doesn't come in 15 minutes, I'll see. 15 minutes, we're All right. Here's a big blue filet up top. 45 minutes into the dinner service, and food is finally beginning to leave the kitchen. Keep it going. 64 calamari. I'll take it any time. As the dishes get rushed to the dining room. That looks wrong. 
Customers are receiving food that's not exactly the way they ordered it. We gotta send this back. What's wrong with that? It's supposed to be uh, well done and it's rare. Oh, for fuck. Coming up right. uh, uh, well done steak's the easiest steak in the world to cook. Well it's not really good. It's a little chewy to me. Ribeye, we need this medium on the fly. It was overcooked. There, where the cheese is. She said it, she said it was terrible. I, she didn't like it. We need a chicken alfredo on the fly. We hate that. Okay. He wants this under the heat for it. Who weed it here, dude? Who weed it here? Right I've never seen frozen food so fucking complicated. <laughs> Unbelievable. An absolute meltdown. Not just in the kitchen, but the dining room as well. Just under 20 dishes have come back. And more frustratingly, it's frozen food. They can't even cook that right. Unbelievable. <laughs> Where'd your dad go? I don't know. <laughs> AJ's gonna have to get back up. Where is he? AJ is a general manager here now, and he needs to be overseeing the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> we won't probably be coming back here. The food was raw. It was raw. It we'll, we're here. gonna take care of this, and then, you know, please come back, because it's only gonna get better. I don't know. Now just comp it. Buy him around on me. Okay. So much money lost. You guys, I'm getting, I'm giving away every damn meal that I have tonight. Everything I'm giving away, free. Honest to God, the last hour, everything we gave away is free. Oh my God, can it get any worse? I'm watching food get thrown away in the garbage can. That's my money going out the window. It's just a disappointment I let it go on this long. After a chaotic dinner service with numerous dishes coming back and comped food, Gordon confronts the owners with an important question that has yet to be answered. Who has the final say at Jack's? We haven't come to an agreement on that. We've only been in the business for one year. AJ, he's been in the business for 40 years, and we were relying on that to drive us to where we needed to be, and he has let us down. That's the truth, that's what it is. Right, so that's a tough spot for you. Yes, my dad has made many mistakes here, but my partners need to step up and understand he's my father, and that makes everything very difficult. You have to separate the father-son, nothing to do with business. You have to let go. That's the first and foremost crucial thing in this fucking restaurant. Understandable. I think AJ is the main reasons why this business is extremely in a hole and he's still taking his damn check every damn week. We ain't. AJ, you're the one that makes all the money, not us, you know? Yeah, how many hours do I work to eat, Scott? That doesn't matter. I put the money up, not for you to lose it. I put it up because AJ was supposed to be a 40-year restaurant. Let me say something. I booked eight parties, big parties, by thousands of dollars, and that's the thankfulness I get from this man. He's acting like a child. You know, be a man, face up. Story after story after story after story. I'm so sick of it. I'm pissed. With so much food coming back last night, that's not normal in any restaurant. So I decided to get in early this morning, have a good look around before any member of the staff come in. That is salmon. That's just marinated in, it's like an Italian dressing. Oh, dear. What's this? Oh. Seafood restaurant on the water. Tuna and dyed pink to make it look authentic. Look at it. My god. Unbelievable. And here we have... That looks like the mushroom risotto. Great risotto. Unbelievable. Alarmed by the state of the kitchen, Gordon is anxious to take the staff on a tour. Good morning. There's something I want to show you guys, yeah? Come with me. Come in. The general hygiene in this fridge is a fucking joke. All right, come round. Walking round, want to get up to speed, looking at the ingredients, checking. What is that? Is that just taken from the steam table and dumped on the trolley and then whisked yes, in here? That's exactly what it is. That should be straight in the trash. Hey, I ate here yesterday. Yeah. I'm not happy. Whoever's responsible, 40 years in the business, well experienced. You have to seriously start opening your eyes. This place is not right here. We got no chance. I did not know that was going on. Item after item. Oh, I was pissed. What's this here? I believe it's beef tips. Beef bits in blood. That's nasty. I need some answers, AJ. 
It's pretty terrible, and uh, you know a lot of it lies on AJ. There's no excuse for it. And that's the that's the classic of the day. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a risotto. Take a good look. Unfortunately, it's not a drawing. That's real serious shit at its best. It's a joke. Look at the fucking colour of the chicken. AJ, come on, have a look at it. Yeah, no, you've got to see it, AJ. I do see it. My father doesn't want to deal with the back of the house. The back of the house is falling apart. That's my frustration. I'm sorry, but it's not right. It's got to be somebody's responsibility. I'm not going to take responsibility. It's the owner's fault. Why would I blame myself for that? I'm not going to blame him for that. Unbelievable. Trusting my dad is obviously not working. Look at where all our money is gone. I'm really oh, mad right now. They can't go on like this. Get everyone together. We're going to just get everything cleaned up, start scrubbing walls, cleaning all the stoves, get rid of all that food in there, whatever's dirty, garbage. While the staff and owners clean the kitchen, Chef Ramsey meets with local fishermen. How are you? Pleasure meeting you. To see what Jack's is not taking advantage of just outside its doors. Fresh fish. The ice is what, a foot deep? Uh, the ice is actually about nine inches. Look the size of that tiny little rod. Yeah, I'll try it a couple and times. That, you that, might get um, something that, on there. That, that attracts them, my god. Yeah, if you feel something, then you pull it up. Perch, I mean, very tasty. Oh, very yeah. tasty. Do you yes. ever get into jacks to yes. eat? Oh, yes, I do. What's the food like in there? I don't like their fish so much because they use a little bit too much sauces and kind of lose the actual flavor of the yeah. real fish, you know? Yeah. Got something on there? I think no. you got a fish. Pull it, pull it, pull it up. Oh, yeah, he is, he is on the yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. You got one. Very good, very good. Yeah, very good. It's just nasty. It is nasty. And I've had people tell me, when I eat at your restaurant, I get sick, and I start laughing, thinking, oh, they're just full of shit. They're not. They do get sick. Gross. This is fucked up. Oh, my god. God, look at them, eh? Not a bad catch today. Fantastic. Now, I'm going to um, turn this into a, a really nice chowder, OK? And once you guys are finished, you going to come over and have a bowl? Absolutely. Yeah? Hey, yeah. thank you very much. Get those Pleasure. bloody hands warm. Yeah. See you later. After an informative afternoon with the locals, Chef Ramsay introduces the first of many changes designed to get Jack's back on track. You and you and I are going to go make a chowder. Yeah. I'm going to serve it in a bread basket. Something simple, finished, fresh local caught fish. Let's go. Up. I'm pretty excited to prepare this food. I, I think that this, some of these changes are going to be what does it for us. Start off with a touch of olive oil, bacon, onions, celery, and with a touch of Tabasco. Oh my gosh, I'm standing here next to Chef Ramsay. He's showing me food that he likes and he thinks will work. You better take advantage of it, that's all I can think of. Bang, a really nice chowder. Yeah. Then I'm gonna do a little poached salmon as well. So salmon in, three or four minutes in there. The whole thing has to ooze fresh. Out of the cold bouillon. Your broth, over. Two easy dishes to make the pressure less on the line. I'm excited. Yeah, I hope you are. With the special set, Gordon decides to implement one other change to the dinner service. Scott, you said you want to be more involved. Tonight, run a section. Present the menu, welcome them, hand over, take the order, push the specials, and serve. Scott is going to get beat up really bad tonight. I'd like to laugh at him a little bit. He's going to be running your Ooh. section tonight. Give him your apron. Yeah, I think we've got enough string to go around. And, um, yeah, prove that you're not some scary monster that wants to beat the crap out of everybody. Does that large egg have a smile or not? Sure. Yeah. Give us one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. OK. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Push the specials. Excite them. Don't scare them. Uh-oh. Okay. With customers starting to arrive, How are you? Good. Scott is embracing being a waiter. The kitchen seems ready with the new specials. Now I'll keep my eye in the window and communicate with you. And everyone seems ready to make tonight's service a success. I believe we have balsamic or I would vinegar. Prefer, what do you I would prefer balsamic vinegar. If, if, we, if I don't have, you know, bear with me. I, I, if we don't have balsamic, is raspberry OK? OK. How's he doing? He's doing good. He's doing good. Yeah. I'm watching. He's doing great, actually. Why is his head all tilted like that? Uh, I don't know what did happen. I have everything right off for you guys. Thank you. Roly poly. Look at chimpanzee hanging over a cage looking for some bananas, eh? Come on, eh? Give us some oomph there, yeah? Oomph, yeah? Mm -hmm. 
It's a half hour into dinner service, and the new fresh seafood specials are a popular choice. I'm going to have a poached salmon. Fish chowder and seafood chowder. As the tickets pile in. Three special salmon and a chowder. The challenge now is getting the food out. God, I need those special salmon. Bulo. Special what? I'd call for stuff, and they'd be not listening to my organization and what I wanted to have come up to the hot plate. One piece of salmon. Did you season it with salt, like I said? Oh, shit. Need it? I need it yesterday. Get it done. Not one table came out of this kitchen completed yet. Fuck. Come on. It's so frustrating looking at the cooks behind the line because they don't actually give a damn. <laughs> so Aaron's got his work cut out, and you can't work with that dead wood. No chance. With Aaron's orders falling on deaf ears. I'm dying, dying for those Alfredos. Very little food has left the kitchen. Wait, where's our food? We've been waiting. 45 minutes to an hour for our food. Shaking. That's I'm getting mad. Getting mad. Okay, calm down. Calm down. It's gonna be okay. Look, you guys. It didn't say cheese on the ticket. I can't have cheese on the burger. What are we gonna do? We gotta fix this. I don't know nothing. Well, they're waiting forever for this food. Be honest, I, I don't know. That time they start showing the guy a little bit of respect. But they're not. So that one guy is just rude to him. I need a new bun for this kid burger, please. Anton, give me a new bun on now. Aaron. And look at me. He's got to do it. Yeah. You can't mop up for them. Can we run that? Come right back for that kid burger, please. The place is going down in flames. The tickets are backed up. Nothing's coming out. It turned into a total disaster. Oh, my God. An hour into dinner service. Virtually no food has left the kitchen. Oh my God. And Aaron, who's only been working at the restaurant for a matter of weeks. Just toast me a croissant. I need it yesterday. I don't know what that is. Now faces the prospect of running the kitchen alone. Why do my yeah, items yeah. take so long? It's too much of a head fuck here. I want to talk to you about it seriously to get it fucking right. And each and every one of you have to step up to the mark. This restaurant hasn't got long to go unless we change. We're changing, with or without you. So do as the chef says and listen, OK? It was good that Chef Ramsey came in and he kicked them between the legs and made said, hey, get your shit together and get out. You got 84 coming my way, right? Grill fry? Yeah. OK. Get burger, no cheese. Finally. OK, special salmon, pinko perch up top, 84 up top. Good. Food is finally coming out of the kitchen. Thank you. Oh Look God. at that. Oh. And Scott is finally getting comfortable as a waiter. Can I get not anything out of your way, guys? Although diners are enjoying the new seafood specials. Well, How's the fresh good. perch? Great. Yes. Fantastic. Nice. The rest of the menu is a disaster. I need this a little bit more. It's really good. That's not made well. The, 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 the complaint's going to go straight back to the kitchen. Whoever's cooking the shrimp's overcooking it. They've got to know before service. Then we tell them after. The next dish is going to be overcooked as well. It's going to be done straight away. OK. Yeah? The customer can wait. AJ? When they're in a crunch in the kitchen, AJ sometimes gets confused. AJ? AJ? Who's calling me? Of course, we laugh because he waddles away. But at the end of the day, it's really not funny. The kitchen needs to know first, my friend. <laughs> then they stop fucking overcooking it. That's your job. We got a complaint on the shrimp. Aaron, listen. Aaron. Listen. We got a complaint on the shrimp. There was poorly cooked food. Or it was undercooked food, or they weren't happy with the food. We lost it. We lost control. Is that ready? This is not ready. No. This is not ready. Come on, big boy. Look at this shit. We're going down quicker than the Titanic. They get better service at a shelter than they do here. What the fuck, dude? Where's the honey? I, I don't know. Everything was screwed up. Give it to me again without all the grease in the bottom. Food got screwed up. Oh, I need the whole sandwich remade. Am I pissed off? With yet another meltdown in the kitchen, Chef Ramsay knows drastic changes are needed. Aaron. There's no one behind there that respects you enough as the head chef, and you need to stamp your authority on that kitchen. I mean, a joke. It is a joke. You're not an asswipe for your staff. They're there to support you. And I'm more fucked off with you, AJ, because you pass it to him. If this was my restaurant, your salary would be cut by 50%. Half your salary can benefit crucial areas that need supporting right now. That's a big thing. He is the motivation for me being here. 
So cutting my dad's salary, that's not a, a simple thing to do. And I'm not a heartless, cold-hearted person. Tomorrow, there's going to be major changes. We're relaunching this place. And I am going to have them crammed in here like fucking sardines. In order to be ready for the relaunch, Gordon's team works all night to make Jack's a more inviting seafood restaurant. Now, all night we've been working, yeah? Ready. We've made some really nice, exciting, subtle changes. It's beautiful. Ready. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. I'll check it out. <laughs> Very cool. It's awesome. This is sweet. Hey, something That's the which love. I can't believe you've never had in here. I know. Yeah? Fun for the kids, yes? A wonderful fish tank. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> What do you think of the boys in the ceiling? Those are great. Huh? That's so great. great. <laughs> so simple but cool. Oh, yes. Look at that. Look at the metal. We've got the oh, wow. wall lined with that corrugated iron. So it just modernizes it up, freshens it up. That looks build. so nice. And no more faded wood. I hated those walls before. Nice little fresh fish tanks on the wall, yes? Oh, there's a little fish in there. We've got the little fish tanks along the wall as well, just so when you sat in those booths, you can have some fun. That is great. I was like, wow, especially because I thought the only answer to this place was a bulldozer. It's incredible how he took something so simple and made it so warm and inviting. It's, it's great. Thank you so much. And none of you are very welcome. Now, you're probably wondering why the rope is on the table, yes? This is the new menu, yes? Wow. Yeah, and on the back of the menu, How to yeah, tighten you can have some fun with the knots. That is yes? so cool. OK, here you give go. the kitchen a touch of time. When we get backed up, how fun. Yes. That's awesome. So cool. Chef Ramsey took it real simple. He took a nautical theme we had, and he ran with it, and some simple, nice, light touches, and it's great. I love what he did here. It's warm. It feels friendly. I love it. Thank you. Now that the decor has been freshened up, Gordon introduces the most critical change for this restaurant, a new menu. Fresh mussels, crab cakes, fresh oysters, the fish tacos, yeah? Nice. Like post salmon, exactly like last night, fresh, delicious. I'm glad the whole menu's gone. I thought that menu was crap when I got here. Now that it's gone, I'm pretty excited to prepare this food. My favorites, yeah, fish and chips, yeah, with homemade tartar sauce. You now can stand proudly and announce that Jack's has the best fish and chips in Michigan, OK? The menu is incredible. I'm excited to actually be a part of this new restaurant and kitchen where it's needed. Big night. We're relaunching Jack's tonight, and we're starting afresh. People are going to come back to this place and finally enjoy coming back to Jack's again. OK? We're ready. Don't fuck it up, yes? Let's go. Let's go. Right, you and I in there. Up. With relaunch night upon them, Jack's not only has a new menu to contend with, but a winter storm as well. Cold. This is crazy. It's a winter storm, but it hasn't stopped anybody from coming, and these cars are backed up nearly half a mile. Now, Jack is back, and if this doesn't work on relaunch night, I'll take that rope and hang all three of them over the side. Unbelievable. Fuck me, it's cold. All right, they open this up. Nice, I like that. This is going to keep kids entertained. I know. This, too, you, know, you can tie, you can play. That's something that I like. Yeah, everybody loves the new remodeling we did, so they're having a lot of fun. I did a figure eight. I mean, I have a uh, baby bedrooms. I'll have the herb roasted chicken. Aaron, turn it up now. Yes, yeah. sir. Turn it up now, yeah? Yes, sir. There's no room for error. I'm the chef. I need to control my brigade. How much? I want my chicken wing. Answer my question. I'm going to do my best to be the strongest chef that I can be here. All right, this has got to go. The steak dish. It's really good. Yeah, chicken is like the best about me. With customers clearly excited about the new Jacks, the restaurant fills to capacity, and the kitchen faces a monumental test. OK, sell me a fish taco. You hear me? Fish taco, how long? Let's go. OK, I can't talk with nobody listening. Come on, guys, answer him, please. Fish taco. Fish taco. Fish taco. Fish taco. They're fucking dying on grill fry here, man. With Aaron still fighting to get his staff on board. All right, so sorry. There's a little bit of a hold up in there. Customers who ordered fried food are getting restless. So you know there's a new look, right? Yeah. Now we're waiting for the food. Well, bear with us if it takes a couple minutes for the food, please. How's uh, Chef Aaron doing? Under massive stress. Oh, <laughs> yeah, losing his mind. I got food dying. Jesus Christ. 
These guys are they're, they're, I'm getting buried by Grill Fry. I'm not getting any of their food. Everybody else's food is coming up. They're burying me. Grill Fry's getting beaten, AJ. Bill, I need him to coordinate with me. I need a fish and chip to sell right now. I can't stress enough that AJ, he has 40 years plus experience. Of course, I threw him in the kitchen to help us out. I need two coconut. roasted chickens. Here's coconut shrimp. Where are they? Coconut shrimps. I don't need coconut shrimps. When AJ came back here to help, <laughs> Here's your poor boy, here you go. Poor boy. What table numbers are you feeding me, AJ? Table 41. Okay, 41? AJ, I sold 41 like 45 minutes ago. Okay, never mind. Fuck, man. You have to communicate. You have to communicate. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, better than that. Better than that. Can't even see him behind the fucking line. Get a box from the staff. I can't see the short ass little fucker. Yeah, hold on. Unbelievable. 243 customers through the door so far. Alan's backed up in the kitchen. He's asked for help. AJ's gone in there and made it worse. If they're not careful, this place can fucking sink. Now I will see what's holding up those appetizers, OK? Thank you. Coconut shrimp, lead app. How long? You guys are killing me down there. And you're bringing the whole kitchen to an end. We're going to have to slow the seating down. I can't, these guys cannot keep up. I'm hearing, where's my fries? Where's my fish? And then I don't hear her. It's up in one minute. I'm up in two minutes. I wasn't hearing nothing, so I was like, screw that. I need that fish taco. Hey, don't talk like that. Give me the food I asked for. I don't need your lift. You busy, I'm busy. I don't want to hear no damn arguing back here. I hear people screaming at each other. The only person that should be giving orders back here is Aaron. Is that understood, everybody? Excuse me, did I hear an answer? Did I hear a yes? I'd like to hear an answer! You guys are killing me down there. You're bringing the whole kitchen to an end. With anarchy in the kitchen. The only person that should be giving orders back here is Aaron. Is that understood, everybody? The former silent partner decided it was time to speak up. I'd like to hear an answer! Yes, sir, sir. All right, that's it. Fucking believable. Scott came back here and he showed that he gave a shit, you know, where before I'd never see Scott. And that actually helped me. Okay, let's go. I'm looking for a fish taco. Fish taco, thank you. Beautiful. That's nice looking food. With Aaron now finally controlling his kitchen, Orders are getting to the customers a lot quicker. All right, I almost have a smile on my face, guys. I'm almost smiling. I'm loving the food, yeah? Keep it yeah. going. Man. Keep it going. Yes, nice. sir. And more importantly, you've got clarity with your fucking brigade. I agree. Salud. 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 As dinner winds down, thank you guys. There's a problem with the night's final order of onion rings. That look undercooked, way undercooked. Yeah. Chef Aaron clearly follows Gordon's advice and demands quality food and respect from his staff. Martini, what are you doing? Smoking a cigarette? Did you sell those things, those onion rings earlier so you could go do that? No. Go look at them. They're shit, man. All night onion rings have been beautiful. Look at them. T touch them. I was in the back going touch to the bathroom, em. man. Touch them. I'll drop them again right now. God damn that shit. It can't happen. Good. Last table of the night, and the food has to be just as good at the end of the night as it is in the beginning. Holding his staff accountable till the last minute, Aaron is finally acting like a head chef. Scott. Yes. Good job with what you did with the kitchen. Oh, thanks. Hey, Thank you. I feel my partners realize that, you know what, I can be a benefit here. I enjoy it, yeah. This helped me redeem myself to my partners. I think that Gordon Ramsay saved my friendship, my partnership, and this business. I, for the first time in this restaurant, saw each and every one of the owners working their ass off. None of you were fragmented. It was together. We fixed the biggest problem in Jack's, and that was the food. Now you know what it's like to maintain that. Tama, what's the most important thing you've got out of this week? I got a partner. <laughs> nice. Seriously, the most important thing I got out of this week. What a lovely compliment. And when I first met you, big boy, honestly, I thought your days were numbered. The rumors, the crap, and you've turned it around. We know what we're doing if we put our minds together and we work together, and we can fill this place. Absolutely right. There's only one thing. Excuse me? 
Tamar, I, Bill, we've all yeah. admitted that, you know, we kind of put ourselves out there. AJ never admitted to nothing. You know, a lot of this was his fault. I never said I have no faults, and I did the best I can with all the hours I put. Let me talk for a second. On that exact point, you are here way too much to be effective. I know you think you're effective. We don't think you're effective at 80 hours a week. AJ, it would be the most generous thing you could do as a father for his son to step back. Cutting back on the hours okay. and cutting back on the pay. Not a problem. Yeah. Not a problem. I hope Scott, Bill and Tanner will see that the hours I put here were needed to run the business. They probably will see it. Maybe on my deathbed, they'll confess it, but not before then. That's hard, that, with that. That yeah. was very hard. It, that, that, I've been agonizing over that conversation. It wasn't a personal thing at all. It was, it's needed for him, too. He can't be here that many hours. It's good for everybody. I can't yeah, wait, so awesome. yes, to get back, yes? You, we're bringing you to the gym when you come back. OK. <laughs> Take care, Gordon. Oh, Thank you. Dear. Good night, guys. Thank you for everything. Keep pumping, yes? Yes, sir. After Gordon left, in the days that followed, Bill, Scott, and Tamar gave Aaron the full authority to run the kitchen, the menu, and the staffing. If you have anybody in here that has to go tonight, you can remove them tonight. Aaron immediately fired two cooks and brought in two experienced sous chefs. They don't know the way it was before, and there'll be a new standard set. And the partners realized, although it was difficult, they needed a new general manager to take over Jack's and so they fired AJ. He let it happen, and what is done, he did to that's himself. Right. You're right. I can't You're put right. it on me. You're right. Or no. you. It just sucks that it is, because that's your dad, but you got my support. Firing my dad is what I need for this place to survive, and he's going to back us up on what we need to do, just like any father would that loves their son. We're now moving in the right direction. We actually finally know what we're doing. I think it's awesome. We do three, right. four nights like this, It'll be a breeze back here. Thank you, Gordon. This was an experience of a lifetime. <laughs> the three of us as owners have never been as close as we are right now.